So I'm here at Johnny's Chop Shop in the heart of Soho. I'm here with Danny, AKA Toasty Styles. Uh, Toasty Styles stroke Danny is a brand ambassador for Johnny's Chop Shop. And the reason I'm here today with Danny is to find out a little bit about her life as she is now taking Instagram by storm and by public demand, a lot of people want to see her personality shine. So I just want to find out where Danny started and what was her inspiration and motivation? As you well know, that's the first question. <laughs> <laughs> where did it start? Okay, um, they all started when I was really young. I think I was about five. Um, just got into art. My brother taught me how to draw and just was really passionate about drawing and art in general. And I just it was my strongest subject in school, so I think after school where I wasn't doing much art anyway, I just, and I didn't really know what to do with my career and stuff. I think I just like turned to hair because it was creative and yeah, that's it. I just, okay, just so I just loved drawing, I loved painting and just, I think I just, when I was with my friends, I was like about 14, I'd just be looking at their hair and I'd just be like, can I just do something with it? <laughs> used to colour it, used to cut it, and then just, that's how it all started really, just art in general. Okay, and initially you was a hairdresser. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the transition over into barbering and why you felt you needed to do barbering. Um, <clears throat> it just, it, it didn't really, I was doing it for such a long time. I think I was doing it for about four years. Well, I did it when I was 17. No, I started when I was 16. Then I quit it because I was so young. And then I did it when I was 17 and then I quit it because, again, I was just like, didn't know what to do. Didn't, I didn't know where I was going in life. And then I got to about 22 and I was like, right, I, I need to sort my career out. So I started doing women's hair and I don't know, I felt like there was something missing like four years of doing women's hair, I was just like, that's, I just don't know, there wasn't any passion there. And then obviously Frankie, Frank glorified on Instagram, who's like, who I met like six years ago at a club. I remember we just bonded really like quickly because we were both into hair. And one day I just started looking at his Instagram and I was just like blown away at like his work and how clean it was and how like, old school it was because I love like 1950s and I love all the like Bugsy Malone styles and I just like oh my god like no like I don't know any girl that's actually doing work like this so I was just like I want to do it so yeah then I was just like I think I'm gonna move on from hairdressing so I left where I was working in Selfridges which was a salon on the third floor called Cabela but I just felt like I wasn't really getting anywhere there, so um, yeah, I just decided to do it on my own and start learning myself and teaching myself how to cut men's hair, and that's where it all started. So tell me about this teaching process. How did you teach yourself? Right. I've always had like a really bad learning. I've got learning difficulties. Like I can't understand how people cut hair and when they're explaining it to me. So for ages, I would just watch, watch YouTube, watch people. The more I watched things, the more I was like doing it myself. Like I'd be cutting hair and then I'd be doing it. And I'd just be like, oh my God, why am I, why is my hands doing this? <laughs> and um, yeah, just the more, the more I watch things, the more like I just, it just happens naturally and so I just started doing free haircuts and all my friends and just watching loads of YouTube tutorials and a lot of my work is visual like I just if I think of a hairstyle I can create it and that's what a lot of the stuff I did when I was doing art like if I saw something in my hair I could draw it if I saw a picture I can draw the picture like everything was just creative. I, w I didn't want to copy anyone else. I just wanted to just try and figure it out on my own and it just just happened and a lot of people were like how? I don't understand. And I'm just like, I don't know. I'm just kind of like winging it. <laughs> oh, you're like me. I'm dyslexic as well. So when you're dyslexic, 
you have to figure out your own systems yeah. of learning stuff. Yeah. yeah. And if someone tries to teach you something linearly on the board and it goes against the grain with your learning process, then you find it difficult. So I can relate to yeah. what you're telling me. Yeah. It's so, it was so hard, like, when people are like, oh, you do it this way, and, then, and they're pulling up the hair, and they're showing me all these angles. I'm just like, ah! <laughs> Figure out myself. Yeah. Okay, so tell me what kind of styles you specialise in right now. What's big for you? What style, like yeah. hairstyle? Um, in Barbara, of course. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> uh, skin fades. What else? I don't know. I pomp just, girl? What's that? Are you a pomp girl? Yeah, I love pumps. I love doing anything that's 1950s, anything that's like stylish and creative. I don't, I don't really like anything that's boring. Some s stuff that's stylish. Um, yeah, I don't, and I don't like anything boring. So if a guy just comes in and is like, I want a four and a five, I'm just like, <laughs> what? <laughs> you try and persuade them? Yeah, I'm like, how about we like taper the sides, um, just, you know, because it lasts longer when, when clients come in and they're just like, you do like a five or, or a six or, I'm just like, you know your hair is going to grow back in two weeks, so I'm always like suggesting a taper and a bit shorter and they're always so happy afterwards, they're like, oh yeah, I'm like, where was you going before? <laughs> yeah. All right, let's talk about Instagram now because, you know, your following rate is just going through, it's like off the scale at the moment. Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> Who are these people? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so tell me where the name Toasty Styles comes from because oh. it's quite an unusual name to say the least. It's embarrassing. I wish I could change it, but I can't. <laughs> You're too far gone now, yeah. aren't you? <laughs> um, Oh, it's really embarrassing. Every time I tell, uh, there's some people laugh at the story, and there's other people that are just like, "That's terrible, Danny." But when I worked in the department store, I was eating toast down an escalator. It's so stupid. And this uh, floor manager ran into the salon and was like, "I can take your pass off of you. You can get five for this." And I had like crumbs around my mouth, and I was like, "What? What have I done?" <laughs> And then everyone thought it was hilarious and just started calling me Toasty and, I'd, and like, they'd be like, Oi, Toast, can you pass the spray? And I was just like, how long is this going to go on for? So I just thought, well, for Instagram, I just thought, I don't want to be Danny Does Hair or Danny Styles or anything just like common. So I just thought, me, I remember me and my friend were sitting in the office um, at the back of reception and we were just like, how about Toasty Styles? I was just like, yeah, sounds good. But I didn't think my Instagram was going to go crazy. So how long ago did you start Instagram? Two years ago. Okay, so around about Two and the same half. time yeah. as me. Yeah. Okay. And tell me what drives you the most in barbering? Clients being really happy and coming back to me. Um, Oh God, I'm stuck now. <laughs> I just, I literally just like want my work to be perfect. I want my sectioning to be perfect. That's what's driving me. I want to get to, I've always got goals. I'm always like, right, I want to be like this. I want to be like that. And I'm always like, that was, that's what's driving me to be better at my job. Just like having all these goals laid out. And just, I don't know, just, I want people, I want to inspire people. I want people to be really pleased. And I think that's what drives me. Like, when customers are happy, it's just like the biggest buzz ever. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's so annoying because now you're asking me this, I'm like stuck. Like, they were, I had better like answers for this. <laughs> yeah, that's what's coming from the heart on the day, and that's what counts. And tell me, talking about inspiration, who do you seek your inspiration from if you were to name some names? Inspirations, Frank Reimer, mm -hmm. because he's the one who's inspired me, got me inspiring, and I tell him all the time, and he's just like, oh, shut up. <laughs> it's like, no, you're the reason I got this far. Um, the Luca, Luca? Yeah, no, Luca, yeah. Um, Sorry, Mr. No, <laughs> I love him, he's so funny. Um, Scorum, 
all that, you know, it's all similar. Okay. I love all of that. Just these are the people that inspire me. Anything that's like rock and roll, like 1950s. Oh, yeah, I think it's hillbilly. Yeah, rugger. I don't even know how to no, say no, that. Sorry, not hillbilly, rockabilly. <laughs> rockabilly. <laughs> rockabilly. Yeah, not hillbilly. Um, yeah, rugger. I don't even know how to say the name. It's rugger, isn't it? <laughs> Um, sorry, Alan. Alan Beek. Alan Beek, okay. Alan Beek, Reese, and mate, Men's Spire. Josh, Oh my god. They're sectioning. Drives me crazy. I'm like, how? <laughs> that's, that's the sort of sectioning I want to do, like. And just clean work. I'm sure they, they, they wouldn't say no to a guest spot. Well, we'll see. <laughs> And what would you say the downfalls of being a female barber are for you, in your experience? Do you want me to be honest? Yeah, completely, utterly. You will get elbowed in the vagina. <laughs> you will. You will get elbowed. All right, okay. I'm sure that applies for men as well. Uh, yeah, but for girls, I'm, I think it's, a bit, it's obviously a bit of a... Yeah, you don't want that happening to you. <laughs> Elbowed, elbowed, or like literally, bam. <laughs> All right, okay. So it's not like a rubbing thing. It's no. <laughs> no. I'm just trying to work out exactly what you mean. Elbow. All right. Like okay. the hands are here, and they're just like, Ugh, and you just, but you're like cutting your hair, and just. But yeah, let's move on from that. Also, <laughs> um, you will get people picking on you like a little sister. I think, I'm just going to be honest with you, like, if you're going to be a female barber in the barbering industry, you're going to be seen as like a little, a little sister and, and obviously you're going to get like picked on, but not in a bad way, but you're going to, you're going to feel a bit like, oh, why are they doing this to me? And I'm quite, I could be a bit, like, I like to banter with the guys, but sometimes I can be a bit sensitive and be like, why are you doing this? <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think that's one of the downfalls, like feeling, feeling like you're not good enough because the guys are like getting at you sort of thing. Um, a massive downfall for me is when clients come in and they're like, oh, is it all right if I, if I go with him? And it's like, what, because I'm a girl? Or they come in like, you can do beer trims? You can use a cutthroat? And it's like, yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, even though it's a bit insulting, it's kind of like, yeah, I can. Get in a chair. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, yeah, th there are some hard points about being a female barber. And um, a lot of guys are just a bit like, pff, look down at you. It's not, not all people are going to look down at you, but a lot of people are going to think, oh, she's a girl, she can't do it, sort of thing. So you feel like you have to prove yourself mm. and prove them wrong yep. all the time. And yeah. then you, I suppose it's just, it gives you a sense of fulfilment when they actually come back and say, I want Danny. So yeah, and it's after it, you've proved your worth. Yeah, and it's the best feeling when guys come back to me. It's just like, oh, I, and being in Johnny's Chop Shop, I've not had one guy be a bit like, well, I had one guy like, oh, you can use a cup for it. But that kind of made, that kind of made me feel kind of special. I was just like, yeah, I can, sort of thing. And yeah, I haven't had anyone be a bit funny about it, but I remember a guy was like, is it right if I go with a guy because um, I've had a bad experience with um, a girl? And I just looked at him and was like, what, in, in general or with your hair? <laughs> and he's just like, no, with my hair. And I was like, but just because one girl balls your hair up doesn't mean like the next girl is going to do it. Like, just, I th but I feel like because there's so many females doing it now, a lot of guys are starting to change their mind about women doing hair, like men's hair. Yeah, this, I mean, I interviewed your friend Tilly and she kind of echoed everything that you said, so yeah. I kind of feel you. Yeah, Tilly's good. She's really good. So, yeah, I don't get why you got these people being all like, just looking down, at, like not really, I don't know, like, it's just, you get, you're going to get it. You're not always going to get people liking. 
It's like you get female skateboarders, you get female footballers. Like it doesn't matter about what sex you are. Like you're gonna if you're good at something, if you're creative at something, then then you're good. As we say in the extent, the cream would always rise to the top. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So Danny, what would you like to do most in the barbering industry? Uh, I'd like to be on stage at one point, but I don't think I'm ready just yet. Quite bad, I get really bad stage fright. So once I get a bit more confident at, at doing my work, then I think I'd want to be on stage. I want to travel. And I want to eventually like do a lot of YouTubing and just kind of get the creativity out there. Okay, so you've just basically got to overcome certain fears or obstacles, limitations in your own head. Yeah. Okay, so I've been be asked a... like quite a few times, and I'm just like, no. <laughs> just do it. It's so nerve-wracking when I watch people on stage. I'm just like, how I couldn't talk on stage. I'd be really bad. I'd just be like. <laughs> I just choke. <laughs> just one tip, when you're on stage, just look at one person for 10 seconds yeah. or 20 seconds and that just literally just go around the crowd and keep touching people. <laughs> no, you do, just touch you people. <laughs> no, just touch people because you know what it's like when someone's on stage and they look at you, they're going to touch you. You can think, yeah. wow, that person who everybody's come to see has spoken to me. If you try and talk to everyone, you talk to no one, but if you yeah. talk to one person, one person, one person, you will talk to the whole room. Eventually, hopefully. Larry the Barber Man tip for you. Thank you, Larry. You're very welcome. <laughs> and I always wanted to ask you, in your opinion, how do you feel you've got to where you have today? Uh, being like, don't want to be, this is an X factor or anything. I'm not going to be all like emotional, <laughs> but to get far in life, you really do need to be put down a lot. And I got, a lot of people didn't believe in me in the hairdressing industry. I think that's what kind of um, was made me feel a bit like what's missing sort of thing. Um, I think I've had a lot of like, just people not believing in me and um, just going through like so much and I was just like, look, I need to do this on my own. I couldn't, I, you're not going to impress everyone. Not everyone's going to like you. So I just thought, I'm just going to focus. And I'm just going to just do it just for me, sort of thing. And I think that's what's got me far. Like, I know, you just, you need to be knocked down. Like, your confidence really needs to be knocked down for you to realise that you can actually you, you can be a stronger person than you are and I think I have in the past I have been put down a lot and um, <laughs> yeah I got put down a lot so a lot of people just kind of taking the piss off in uh, but that literally made me so much stronger it made it, I got chucked into the deep end a lot but it was probably the best thing that could have happened to me like because I wouldn't be where I am now so would it would it be fair to say that hair rules your life right now yes oh my god it does I'm eating hair every day <laughs> literally like when it's in my food now I'm just like is there any point in me taking this hair out because I'm breathing it in every day um like I'll be standing in a queue. You've probably read that in Barber Envy, I don't know. And I'll be standing in a queue and I'll just be staring at people's hair, like looking at their nape whirls, and I'm just like, how would I, what would I do? Um, literally, anywhere I go is hair related. If I see someone with a bad haircut, I'm just like, oh my God. I remember like the amount, I think I've cried twice when I've seen a bad haircut. And <laughs> you get that emotional about it. I remember this guy at my old salon, he did a haircut on this bloke and oh my god, it was so bad. It was like £50 for a haircut. He's walked out of the salon and I felt sick. <laughs> I was just like, what has he done? I wanted to run back to the guy and be like, please let me sort your hair out. Like I was horrified. And I remember when I was a junior um, and I was learning, well, no, when was it? Yeah, when I was um, 
teaching myself once a week in an old barber shop um, two years ago. I remember one of the guys was like, come on, Danny, I'm, I've got to go to the football, I've got to go, and I'm, I'm finishing my client's hair. And I was looking at him like, bless you. <laughs> I was looking at him like, uh, can I finish this? And he was like, no, no, I've got to leave. And I just remember thinking, oh my God, this is going to be awful. And my client didn't mind because like, it was free haircut and, and um, yeah, he was cool with it. But when he left the shop, I cried because I felt like my job wasn't completed. It looked patchy and I was like, no. I don't know, I just feel like I care more about other people's hair than my, my own hair. Like, I'm such a bad example. Like, my hair actually looks all right. Fringe looks pretty bad, but... <laughs> a, an obsessive barber over your clients. Yeah, it has. Yeah. To, if it looks like... I'm sure every barber can relate to this, but when a client walks out of the shop, you're like... Yeah, that's good. <laughs> or if they walk out and you're like, damn it, I should have done something else. Like, that's what I love about it. There's always like lessons to learn and stuff like that. And if you make a mistake, it's nothing to worry about because that mistake will make you improve for the, the next time you do it. Like, yeah. If you make a mistake, I haven't, luckily I haven't made any mistakes, like big mistakes. But if you do something and you think, oh God, like, wish I did that, the next time they're in, you're like, I always say to my clients that are my friends, I always go, mate, I'm going to try something different on you. And they're like, yeah, all right then. Because the last time I cut their hair, I was a bit like, mm. they liked it, but I was a bit like, oh, I'm not sure. So yeah, making mistakes in, in the barbering industry is, is like the best thing. It sounds stupid, but it's actually a really good thing if it happens to you, because you can really, really improve. And would you say that your alter ego, Dave, that you've mentioned in the Barbara and <laughs> magazine, helps you overcome these mistakes? It makes my client relax. I'm like, you're all right, love, do you want a beer? <laughs> and it makes them laugh and then just like relax. Because I've, I've done a lot of guys' hair in the past where they've just been like really stiff and they're like nervous and they're sweating. And I'm like, it was making me nervous. Whereas if you just like, I'm quite tomboyish, so I just like to act a bit stupid, and I'm like, like I like to be like, oh, so did you get laid last night? <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, after the haircut, I'm like, if you don't get laid, then obviously we didn't do a good job. <laughs> but actually, it actually, it's some one of my clients came up to me one night, and one night I was like, whatever you did to my hair, do it again, because so many girls are giving me attention, and I was just like, my job was done. <laughs> well, actually, that's maybe uh, another good thing for a female barber. You can kind of look at that boy and kind of think, right, if I do, in your own words, want to get you laid, yeah. <laughs> I was going to lay him. This is the kind of haircut that you should have right now. Yeah, I, that, that's a good reason. Go. Yeah, like, because when a girl's doing, there's nothing against male barbers, but when a girl's doing your hair, like, we. I look at Guy and I've, I'm doing a haircut that I think he's going to look good with and that I think he'll think, oh, like, he looks really hot. And there have been times where I've done someone's hair and they've walked out and I've been like, ooh. <laughs> you want to so bring him back again? <laughs> <laughs> no, it'll have to be professional, Larry. <laughs> okay, cool. And tell me a little bit about uh, your feature that you did in the Barbara Envy magazine. Why do you think you... They reached out to you to do the feature and even more impressive still put you on the front cover. Um, they haven't had a female on the front before and I remember speaking to Andrew at the Barber Bash in Manchester and he came up to me and he was talking to me and he was just like, yeah, like he was really interested. Um, he was like, yeah, this is going to be great. Like, and I think everyone's used to seeing like the bearded tattoo guys and... They just, I think because of my following as well, it kind of helped to get on the front of the magazine. Um, it, I still think it's really weird. I so you say you're following, people are also talk about your talent as well. So, And then you're going to play it down as you always do. <laughs> Normal, standard, toasty styles practice. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. I, I don't know, like when people... Oh, you're on the front of the magazine. Oh, you're a celebrity. And I'm like, no, I'm just still Danny in a little barbershop. Like, nothing. I'm not a celebrity. I'm not going to get stopped in the street and papped or anything. I'm just still like me. But I think 
the fact that they didn't have a female barber on the front of a magazine, that's one of the reasons why they thought they'd reach out to me. And I'm sure there's going to be plenty of other females that they're going to reach out to as well. Okay. Yeah, Tilly did it, was it two months ago in yeah. the other one? And there's loads of other amazing barbers like Leah, Hayden Cassidy, Leanne Buckley, Melissa Toff, Stacey Notley, um, Chloe Cutthroats. There's so many. I, I hope I haven't missed anyone. Obviously, Tilly. Who have I missed? I don't want to miss anyone, but they're all. Daniela. <laughs> and Danica. Daniela yes, works Danica. for. Sorry, Danica. Daniela yeah. works for Alan. Yeah. Yes, Danielle. They're all so amazed. Like, they're so, like, I'm so proud of. I've been following, I like stalk them. I'm just like so happy for them. They're all doing, oh, and Siobhan. Don't want to miss Siobhan, she's amazing. Um, but like I followed some of the girls from the beginning and they're just unreal. Like, especially Leah, like she's doing, like she's blown me away. Like she used to come up to me and be like, your scissor work, like how do you do it? Like you're amazing. And now like a year on, she's like a thousand times better than me. And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> but it's good. Like. I should definitely support other other people in the industry. Like everyone's like a big family. That's another reason why I love barbering, because the hair industry is so competitive and bitchy. And well, it's not like everyone, but I felt like when I was working in the hairdressing industry, like I felt like a bit like everyone was competing with each other. Whereas in the barbering industry, everyone's like, "Mate, your work is sick." Like just beer love. It is. It's just pure. <laughs> Peace and love. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Okay. And what would you say your one greatest moment in barbering was, if you was to define it? Greatest moment. Barber envy. <laughs> oh, so this is it. When Larry the Barber Man walked in with your, your Magazines. Your I was like, who is that on the front? No, I'm joking. <laughs> Um, London School of Barbering. They oh yes, that's right. Yeah, I meant to ask you about the London School of Barbering. Yeah, that gig. was really first female to judge there. That was another bizarre thing. That was nice. Uh, so what took place on your on your visit to the London School of Barbering? How they contact me? Yeah. When? Instagram obs. Yeah. <laughs> and then you went there, and what did you do? Did you do a demo? And they asked me to do a demo, but I get your bottle because went. Yeah, I'm self-taught, so I was like, what if I do something? And they're like, what the hell is she doing? Like, I just, like, I'd rather, like, be really comfortable with what I'm doing and show people and be like, oh, my God, try this technique. Okay, Danny, so in closing, tell me what words of advice you could give to another uh, female considering entering into barbering. What words of wisdom could you give to them as a takeaway from this whole interview? Okay, so YouTube, watching haircuts and beard trims, just constantly, like it will get boring after a while, but if you just keep watching YouTube, watching people, just literally keeping your head down and just focusing on yourself, like block out anyone that is being negative, not, not being positive, because that's what you're going to get, you're going to get people like, discriminating you, you're going to get people just like criticising your work, not discriminating, sorry, criticising your work, they're going to be like, oh god, look, you're going to get it, you're going to get negative vibes from everyone, so you just need to like block it all out and just concentrate on yourself, um, free haircuts, just give all your mates, even if it looks awful, just give all your mates free haircuts because the more you make mistakes, the more you're going to you're going to improve, yeah, and um, just be confident, like, with yourself, and just be creative, don't, don't do something because other people are doing it, like, just do what you like and what inspires you most, like, try and just be your own person, because if you're going to try and be like everyone else, it's just, people ain't going to see, like, a real you, you just need to be like yourself, and that, that's all I've done from the beginning, I just focused on me, and I think that's why I've got far because it, it's li I've literally just been me from the beginning. I've not tried to be like anyone else. And I think if you're going to be a female barber, you just need to literally 
concentrate on yourself and don't let anyone bring you down. That's, that's all I can say, really. Danny, thank you very much for this interview. I'm sure Thanks, a lot Mary. of males and females will, will uh, be long awaiting this uh, interview. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to watch it and be like, oh, God. <laughs> I wish you every success in the future, Danny. Thank you. Thank you for the interview. Nice to meet you. Again. <laughs>